Welcome believers all over the world. Are you ready for a miracle? I believe that God wants to work one in your life. This is Tim and Vicki Campbell with Hear and Be Healed. We just want to thank you for tuning in. Let us go to God with prayer and believe him for great things even on tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for the opportunity. As always, Lord, it is a delight to minister your word that you have trusted us with, to minister to your people that hear it, O oh God. And we pray, Lord, as they hear that they'll have the faith to believe, to be healed. And we always believe, God, that your word will go forth and it will produce that which you sent it out to do, to touch the hearts of many, O oh God, and that it will bypass those, O oh God, that may be by the wayside, the thorny ground, the stony ground, and penetrate into good ground, go forth and find good ground. And everyone we declare that is watching tonight is good ground. And everyone that viewed this video, God, is good ground. And that, Lord, we go for the high expectation of knowing that it's not 34, not 64, Father, but a hundredfold. So we claim in the name of Jesus, all those that are watching tonight are that good soul and they are ready to bring forth the fruition of their seed that is going to be planted in their heart tonight. A hundredfold in Jesus' mighty name, we bind every devil, O oh God, that will come to try to steal the word, snare the word, O oh God, and cause the word to be choked up in Jesus' name, that the word will go forth and it will manifest that, Lord, which you set it out to do. And we give you praise and glory in advance for it and we yes. count it done in Jesus' in name. Jesus I want you to declare this with me. Thank you. We are well able. We That's what we're well talking about able. tonight. Amen. We are well able. Amen. We are able because God is able. Amen. And so we're going to get in God's word and we're going to find out what the word says. And we're going to let the word of God be final authority. We're going to let the word of God be the standard for our life. And in doing that, it will establish the foundation, establish the principles, establish the promises of God. And as we stand on those promises, we can believe that they're going to come to pass in our life. Bringing forth the things that we're declaring concerning the word of God, that it is what we live on. That's what, the, that's what Jesus said, men shall not live by the, uh, bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. And so we want the word of God to be a reality and be as even your necessary food. To feed your flesh, feed your, feed your soul, mm -hmm. feed your spirit, and call all those things to line up with the word. Declare this quick and say, body, body, line up, line up with the word of God. With the word of mind, God. Mind, mind, line up, line up with the word of God. With the word of God. Heart, heart, line up, line up with the word of God. With the word of God. So the Bible says that God's word mm -hmm. shall never change. So that means everything else has to change. So if your mind is not like you want it, if your heart is not like you want it, <laughs> and above all, if your body is not like you want it, then you begin to speak to those things and command them to line up with the word of God and let the word of God have final authority over yes. your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus. So we're talking about well able. We're going to start this off with a scripture as Jesus asked a question to the uh, person that came to him for healing. Mm -hmm. And so when we come to Christ, we come to God, we must believe that he is and he's a reward of them that diligently seeking us, what mm -hmm. the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 6. Okay, so what we're going to find out is Jesus is always ministering. Know this, that whenever it comes to healing, let's solve this question. Does, is God willing to heal? Is it God's will to heal? Mm -hmm. it's, an, it's an emphatic yes and always. He's always ready, always willing to heal. The question is, do we believe that he's able to do it? And if we believe that he's able, yeah, I believe he's able to do it. No. Well, do you believe he's able to do it for you? So that's what we're believing for, that we are well able to receive whatever we need from God because he's able to do it. So I want my wife to read Matthew 9, verses 28 and 29. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him and said unto them, and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yeah, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. So there were two blind men that was coming to him and saying, Lord, that we may receive our sight. The son of David, have mercy on us. And so a lot of people are saying, well, hey, if I had the opportunity to be, be like them and, and go to the house where Jesus was, I could believe to be healed too. Well, mm -hmm. then you have to believe what the word says. He's the same yesterday day and forever. He's forever always with us. He's not alive, but he's not dead, but yet alive. 
So you have to believe that. So if you believe that he's alive, if you believe that he comes to confirm his word, then whatever his word says concerning you, you have to believe that he's still able to do it. Amen. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So right now we're in today. Don't even think about yesterday. Yesterday's dead and gone. And don't even look into the future because the Bible says faith is now. And so right now in your present state, in your present situation, there is a promise of God. And his word says that he, by his stripes you are healed, whether it's concerning healing. The Bible says he's able to make all grace abound toward you, that you may have a sufficiency in all things and not wanting anything. So you have to believe that that word is a now word for you. And so if you believe it and stand on it, don't be moved, don't relent, don't be moved by what the situation or the circumstances, just be moved by what the word says. Mm -hmm. That's what you stand on. Amen. Jesus said this here. He says, I like a man that stands on my word. As a wise man that built his house up on a strong foundation, who dig deep to find that, that the solid foundation, and that when the winds and the storms come, they beat up on the house vehemently, that house will stand. So what keeps us in, in good standing with God and standing uh, in the things on, on, on the promises of God is that we stand on the word and that we don't be moved. Guess what? Your body's going to ache with pains and I'm telling you, it's going to be screaming at you. And sometimes it screams louder than the word. But you have to say, I am grounded and rooted and planted in this word Amen. and I shall not be moved. And, and sometimes when we are battling things, we keep our mouth shut. You need to let the thing know, listen, you are subject to change. You are temporary. For he says that I can speak to the thing, that thing will obey me. So I'm going to stand on the word and declare what the word of God says to that thing. And so thing you're going to change, not God's word. He said this is forever settled. And he said it is going to perform that which he called it out to do. Um, Thank you, Jesus. Just to, just to do a side note, Kenneth <coughs> he was praying for a man. And as he was praying for the man, he says, now see if you can bend over and touch your toe because he had a back issue. And the man tried to bend over. He says, I can't do it. I did pray for him. He said, well, Lord, man, this guy didn't get healed. He says, I said, I said they would. Because he said, if, that's what Kenneth called him. He said, couple of things. he said, Lord, you said we lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. He, he, he's, not, he's not healed. He's not, he didn't recover. He, he says, I said they would. So he prayed for the man again. He said, now try it. Bend over the sick and you touch your toes. And the man tried again. He said, I can't do it. He said, Lord. He says, I said they would. You may pray for the man again. Can I see if you can bend over and touch your toes now? The man tried to bend over, he couldn't do it. He said, Lord, you said that if we lay him sick, they should recover. He said, I said they would. And he said it forcefully. And Ken said, man, bend over and touch your toes. And so when he said it that way, the man bent over and touched his toes. And he said, ah, I see. I see what I was doing wrong. Mm -hmm. He told the man, see if you can reach over and touch your toes. So the idea was God was able to do it is that he was speak, he was not speaking God's word. God's word is an emphatic yes and amen. So he told the man, do this. It was more of a, so instead of for saying, see if it works, it was a declaration of faith saying, do it. Mm -hmm. And that's what Mary said to the mm -hmm. disciples, you know, mm -hmm. Jesus, look, mm -hmm. they came, they was invited to the party and says, uh, look, Jesus, they don't have any wine. Jesus said, woman, what is that to do with me? My time has not yet come. And she didn't even listen to what he said. He went in one in and out the other. She says, told the disciples, whatever he tell you to do, do it. Mm -hmm. So whatever God tells you to do, do it. Don't try to reason it. Don't try to figure it out. All those things are on God's business. If somebody came to you and say, listen, this time tomorrow, you are going to be wealthy. And I'm going to, and I'm going to, you, if you meet me here, I'm going to write you a check for a million dollars. Now, if you sitting there arguing with them, saying, how you going to do that? How you going to do that? Okay, it's not up to you to find out how they're going to do it. Uh, I don't want to get into the Wednesday's messages, message, but we can dictate when we receive. And it's going to be a, it's going to be a challenging teaching, but we can. Because when the man of God came and told them, says, listen, by this time tomorrow, this will be, he said, the price is going to be real cheap, if I could just paraphrase. The prices are going to be real cheap. And this other guy sitting there by the gate talking about how this is going to be, how this is going to happen. <laughs> Questioning what the man of God said. And for that, it, the man of God says, okay, you're going to see it, but you ain't going to eat of it. And so the idea is, what we're talking about tonight is, I want to warn you about the things that can happen when we don't believe. So I want that word to get in your heart and in your spirit. We are well able, well able to receive healing, well able to see provision, 
well able to get the promotion, well able to get success, well able to, uh, to, to, to be successful in everything we put our hands to. Whatever we put our hands to, it will prosper. We are well able. I like this phrase that the Spirit of God has been putting in my heart. No man will be able to stand before me all the days of my life. If that man is not walking with God, he will never be able to stand before me all the days of my life. I don't care if it's my boss. I don't care if it's my adversary. I don't care if it's my enemy. If they're not for God, they will not be able to stand before me all the days of my life. I will always overcome them with victory. If you're my opposition, if you're my adversary, God will always cause <laughs> me to win. Always cause me to win. And so get that in your spirit. Say, I am well able. I am well able. I am able to do whatever God's word says, especially concerning me. Amen. For all his promises, I don't care what everybody else say. They can go around talking about what they can't do, what God can't do, what God haven't done. That is not in my vocabulary. My vocabulary is if God be for me, I am well able to do what he called me to do, especially for his promises concerning me. They are yes and amen. So it might be a no for everybody else, but it is a yes for me. And don't relent. Don't be moved. Don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. God is looking for somebody that's crazy and foolish enough to say what his word is saying. Stand on it. Even at the even at the the the, the, um, the act of go, being looking like a fool, looking like a fool, he's looking for something. Because what he said, he says, "Don't worry about being foolish. Don't worry about worry about looking like a fool." He says, "I'm gonna take that foolish thing and confound the wise, because you have declared my name, you have lifted up my name, and so therefore I am going to show everybody what I can do with something that seems to be weak, something that seems to be foolish." And overcome all the things that people say couldn't be done. The Bible says if God opened the door, no man can shed it. Yes. Amen. No man can shed it. And if there's a amen. door shut that God says it should be open, no door can stay closed when God says it shall be open. So now, we believe in God that whatever his word says, we're well able concerning him. And we're going to find out. We must take him at his word and believe on it regardless regardless so now these men say we believe he says are do you believe i'm able to do this mm -hmm. so i'm asking you do you believe that jesus is able to heal you do you believe that he's able to provide for you do you believe that he's able to take you into every promise and cause you to lay hold on it and receive that promise do you believe that mm -hmm. i know you're saying he's able now do you believe that the promises are for you you might say yes you believe other promises are for you. You're saying yes. If you're saying yes to those things, then you must believe that you are well able to yes. receive those promises. Amen. And so if you're well able to receive those promises, then you got to line Amen. up with it and don't be moved. Stand on it regardless. Well, Pastor Tim, I've been listening to you all this time, and I've been still going through these things. I'm going to keep on sharing this word with you until you finally let it click in your mind, click in your heart, click in your spirit, that what I'm saying is the emphatic truth, and then nothing will change your mind, and you will stand up with your face in the face of the your fist in the face of the devil, say, Devil, this is what God's word say, and it shall be so concerning me and my household. Mm -hmm. Healing is for the children. It is the children's bread and we Amen. shall receive it. We yes. shall obtain it and it is now manifested. I like what David said. Now salvation. Now prosperity. Now. Not, not tomorrow. Not yesterday but right now. So every time I'm in my now season, every time I'm in my now moment, it is provided for me at that very moment. So I don't worry about what I see, what it looks like I don't have. That, 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 that situation doesn't that's not, not me. Broke, busted, and disgusted. Everybody say you are. They look at you saying, you, 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 you say, God going to do what? Keep claiming it. Keep yes. confessing it. Keep professing it. Yes. And when they see the grapes, baby, yes. they're going to be convinced. When they see the milk and the honey, <laughs> they're going to be convinced. So that's what we're going to do. I want you to stand on what God say and, and you be convinced first so that they can be convinced. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. We are well able. Yes. So the blind men say, yes, we, are, we believe. And he says, be it unto you according to your faith. Now, let's look at Hebrews, uh, the third chapter. Hebrews, the third chapter, because we're, we're going somewhere. And you're going to have to really grab hold to this. So I got the word. That's what the lady said to Mr. Masquash said. They got the word. If you got the word, you got the promise. If you got the promise, you got God's, you got God okay on it. If you got God's okay, that's just settle everything. 
The Bible says this is the confidence that we have that if we ask anything according to his will, he hear us. He said, bow, there it is. If we believe and know that he hear us, we know we got the petitions. So when I know I got father's ear, I got his attention, I got what he said. Yes. I got what I put before him because if he hears it, he going to do it. Mm-hmm. So let's look at uh, Hebrews, the 11th chapter, starting at verse verse 7. Is it the third chapter or 11? The third chapter. Did third I see the 11th chapter? Yeah. I'm, I apologize. Okay. It's the third chapter of Hebrews, starting with the seventh verse. Okay. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as the provocation and the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, provoked me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore I was grieved with, the, with that generation, and said, They do always err in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest therefore be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. In departing from the living God. So here's Paul really talking about what we're going to talk about later as we close out. Mm -hmm. Dealing with the issue in the book of Numbers Amen. where the spies were sent out. And so Paul is bringing that thing because he said all the old things were written for our admonishment that we can look at them and learn from them. Mm -hmm. There's one thing we need to learn. We look at what happened to them. So the idea was thinking about what God had promised. Here he's talking about salvation and everything that goes with salvation. And so He's saying, think about it. If he's using the analogy of what God had promised, to say that, okay, whatever, God, whatever comes out of God's mouth is a promise, then we should always believe it. So he says, uh, harden not your heart. So if God says healing belongs to you, don't harden your heart by saying, I don't believe that. Mm. I believe that that's passed away. That went away with the, the, with the disciples. That went away with the apostles. God is not healing people like he did back then. God is not doing those things like he was doing back then. And so that's hardening your heart. Any promise that God make and you don't believe it or you don't receive it, he sees that as rejection. He sees that as, as hardening your heart. And so Paul says, uh-uh, no, -uh, don't. Harden not your hearts as in the day of provocation. They provoke God. God is telling them, I got blessings to bless you with. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you a land that's flowing with milk and honey. All you have to do is go in and take it. Mm -hmm. Just go in and possess it. It's already yours. Don't worry about what's there. I, I'm, I give it to you. And so we're going to find out what the, the, how Joshua and Caleb interpret that. Mm -hmm. They heard one thing and the people heard one thing. And we got to always hear what God says and then line it up on that. So if you walk into a bank and, and God says, go into that bank, that man going to give you a loan for a million dollars. You walk in the bank and all you're talking about is, I ain't got good credit. I ain't got good credit. I'm not going out to that bank. God, I ain't got good credit. God says, I'm not worried about your credit. Just go to the bank. They're going to give you a million dollars. You don't go in there because you says, well, <laughs> Lord, I... You want me to go to that bank, but I ain't no used to be going to this bank because I got good credit. And you know the Bible says, hey, uh, owe no man nothing, and uh, you know we should be debt free and all that stuff. That, that ain't what God actually. He just told you to go in the bank. They're going to give you, they're gonna give you a, a million dollars. They didn't mm -hmm. say well, it's going to be a loan tonight. They just said they're going to give you a million dollars. Mm -hmm. But you arguing, coming up with every situation uh, that, God, that goes against what God says. Mm -hmm. that is a, that's hardening your heart. It's an evil heart, as what Paul was going to find out, says, an evil heart of unbelief. Yeah. So the idea is, whatever God says, don't say opposite. So if God says healing belongs to you, do not dare say anything opposite of that. Well, I don't believe God heals like he used to. You know, my mother had cancer and that preacher was praying for her. And I just think it's unfair for preachers to preach like that, giving people false hope. No, mm. no. When we preach like this here, it's not giving you false hope. It's preaching like this here to give you faith to believe that God is able to do it. So what's the use of you serving a God that can't do anything? You want me to tell you you're serving a God that can't do anything? Mm. Why would you even serve him? Right. If, if you, if, why would you even waste your time yes. and your money going yes. to a church serving a God whose yes. arms is not strong to heal? He can't speak and say a thing that will cause you to have life and he can't do anything for you. And you might say, well, man, you're right. What's the use of me serving this God? Because I can't believe what he's going to do. I can't believe what that word says so you know you're right maybe i ought to become an atheist and not believe god no that's destruction going somewhere to happen mm -hmm. whatever the bible said do if you grab your bible if you got your bible in your hand grab your bible and, and lay hold to it everything in this book 
is written for your admonition. The Bible says all scriptures are for reproof, are for instructions, mm -hmm. for corrections, that you may be thoroughly furnished unto every good work. So everything in here is for you. This is not a fictional novel. This is definitely not a history book per se. They're just saying it recorded some things in history. This is the very life of God, the word of God. This is your very life. Mm -hmm. And if you would take it to heart and say, you know what? I am going to believe every word that proceeded out of this book, for this is the word that come out of the mouth of God. This was given by the inspiration of God. And so instead of being foolish like other men going through trying to discredit it, you grab a hold and say, I am stupid enough to believe it. I am foolish enough to believe it. It don't make sense. Man would throw a stick into a river and expect the axe head that's float up on it. Don't make sense at all. That a man would stick forth a ride and cause the Red Sea to part. Don't make sense at all. That a man would walk on water. Don't make any sense to me but I believe it Amen. you a fool I am a fool I believe it and so I'm not going to move and so whatever this book say God said if whatever this book say God promised I am going to stand on it I'm not going to refuse it I'm not going to harden my heart I will not provoke the Lord so whatever God says I said I believe it yes. I believe it and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They're going to receive a whole lot of things. He said, here are the two you have asked me nothing. But now ask the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, he will give it you. Yes. As he said in the King James Version, he will give it to you. So now, he says, so I swear in my wrath, in the 11th verse, they shall not enter into my rest. I have given, his, his rest was his promise. Mm -hmm. Go in. We're gonna, let's, let's, let, me, let, let me get a little further and then we're gonna, we got to get into Numbers 13 chapter um, so I'm going to read on to 13 it says but exhort one another daily why it is called today lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin so Paul said encourage one another whatever the word of God say, say it because sometimes you get, people get discouraged and they do get into sin Mm -hmm. Deceitful saying, you know, ain't no used to be believing God. So I'm going to drink away my pain. I'm going to smoke away my pain. I'm going to mm. lust away my pain. No, there's healing for your pain is the word of God. Mm -hmm. Don't sell out to the devil. Don't let him trick you like that. That's Just right. stand on what the word of God says and don't be moved. But we all may partake as it's going to say in 14 verse of Christ. If we hold, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end, keep on pressing on. Stay confident. I like what uh, Alexander Dowie said when he sent that message to John G. Lake. Hold on. I'm praying your, daughter, your sister shall live. Amen. You hold on. We're praying. Yes. You're going to be healed. Thank Amen. Jesus. Yes, okay. While they said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the, as in the provocation. Watch this. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom it was grieved forty years, was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wildernesses, and to whom swear that he, he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Amen. They couldn't enter into his rest. But watch this here. Let us therefore, in the fourth chapter of the first verse, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering to his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. A promise. It doesn't matter what the promise is. If God has made the promise, let's make sure we don't have an evil heart of unbelief not entering into that promise. Mm -hmm. what, is that pro what is that promise? I am the Lord thy God that will provide you. I will bless you. And multiply and I will multiply you. And bless and I will bless you. I'll cause you to be the head and not the tail. I am able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. Mm -hmm. I'm able to make all grace abound toward you, those things that he's promised you. And so we have to say, I am not going to provoke God to have an evil heart of not believing what he says. Yes. I'm going to be like uh, uh, David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. He maketh me. And he doeth all those things. Mm -hmm. Prepares a table. Lead you and guide you beside still waters. His mm -hmm. rod and staff is comforting you. Mm -hmm. All these good things, those are the promises of God. And so we believe those things that we're not, we don't be moved on them. And so we don't believe anything different than that. Mm -hmm. Lord, why would you come see about me? That sounds like an evil heart of unbelief. You won't enter into the rest. See, here's the thing about rest. When do you, th when do you know you believe what God says? When you rested. You can tell when you've entered into the rest. 
you enter into the rest of what God's promise says when you don't worry, mm -hmm. when you don't complain, mm -hmm. when you'll be asking God questions, when, how, why. You just rest in and know that it's done. Amen. See, watch this here. It's easy for you to rest on somebody's word when you believe what they said. Mm -hmm. If you call somebody and say, listen, yes. I know you are to be a person that, that, that's a key right here. I know you to be a person I can depend on. Every time I come to you, you, you help me. And so right now, I need some help. And they say, man, I got you, man. When they tell you that word, that come out of their mouth, that was they promised to you, I got you, man. Mm -hmm. You hang that phone up and you go to sleep at night. You don't be somebody, man, I, would, I hope brother come through for me. Now, if his word didn't mean anything, yet you would say that. Mm -hmm. You would say, whew, man, that joker, he, he lied. Every time I ask him to help me, he always say he's going to help me, but then at the end, he's never able to do it. I'm going to try him again. And so, if you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're not going to enter into any rest. You're going to be worried about, well, well, I hope he come through. You know, if he says, mm -hmm. I'm going to try to help you, man, you're going to worry. But if you've got a person that you know that their word has always been faithful and trustworthy, when they tell you something, you get peace about the situation. You know, right. it's handled. You, that's what God said in Hebrews 11 and 6. They that come to me must believe that I am. I'm what? I'm, you got whatever I said I am. You got that confidence. So if God says, hey, listen, I got that taken care of, you can rest at night. You will have that rest. You'll have that peace if you believe that he's mm -hmm. able to do it. And you'll just sit back and say, Lord, I can trust you. Amen. 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 You want to do something? Oh, no, I'll stop tonight. So you believe that he's able to do it and that he is a rewarder. Not only that he's able to do it, take it a step further, that he is a reward. He will do it. So yes. he's able to do it. He will do it. Yes. He's able to do it. He will do it. And so we believe and have confidence that he says he's able to do it. And so now let us therefore fear. And Paul said, this is Paul saying, hey, listen, unbelief can easily happen. Mm -hmm. I am telling you, unbelief it can easily happen. The devil is subtle. Think about it. There are some things that you can believe God for, and then there are some things you can't. And what, what God says, I'm kind of dumbfounded. I'm, I'm, I'm baffled at this. How is it you can believe me for this, but you can't believe me for that? I'm the same God that did that. Is the same God that will do this. Mm -hmm. So the idea is, if I do this, that is only for your testimony to build your faith up to say, if God did this, then he can do that. Yes. That's what David said. He says, wait a minute. Why are y'all sitting there letting an uncircumcised, uncircumcised Philistine you know, beholding the threatens of the harm of the Lord. He said, wait a minute, I go down there and fight him. I got confidence because I, this is the confidence that I have. If God was with me with the lion, built up my faith. He gave me the bear, built up my faith. Hey, I got enough faith to face that thing because if God gave me the lion and the bear, surely he'll give me this uncircumcised Philistine. Mm -hmm. So if God healed your toe, he'll, then healed your finger, guess what? He's the same God that can heal the cancer. Mm -hmm. Well, wait a minute now, Tim. Hold up. Time out. <laughs> That's a toe. We're talking about stage four cancer. Is anything too hard for God? And I'm not saying that lightly or insensitive. Is there anything too hard for God? If he's the, same, if he's the God of the toe, the God of the finger, he's the God of the cancer. Mm -hmm. He'll destroy and annihilate anything. There's nothing too hard for mm -hmm. God. Is anything too hard for God? And we'll say, no. Okay, well then stand on the word and don't believe and don't let don't provoke God by saying, I don't I don't know God. No. And 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 we might try to sound so pitiful and so loving and caring, but Lord, you know, don't be don't be angry, hasty with me. I just don't I just don't believe. Help me, my unbelief. He said to him, that's still evil. Mm -hmm. That's an evil heart, unbelief. So we want to get to the place where we say, No. Paul said, Let us that's therefore fear, that's a, a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Let's fear that sickness. Let's fear that's an evil heart of unbelief get into you thinking that he can't do it. Mm -hmm. He's able to do it. Amen. And so say, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Now, there were many people that heard it. But watch what happened. Let's go to I'm, let's not waste any more time. Let's go to Numbers 13 and let's let's walk this thing out with the last 30 minutes that we have because I want to burn that in your spirit tonight when you go to sleep that it's branded on your heart that you says I'm well able. If God be for me, I'm well able. So I'm starting in verse 13, uh, I'm gonna kick it off and just gonna read. We're gonna bypass all them names so we don't want to be sitting there wasting time trying to pronounce them and you trying to 
uh, see whether I said it right or not. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness to Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. So, so God said, Listen. I'm telling you what I, I'm telling you my promises. The land is flowing with milk and honey. So what I want to do is I want every representative of every tribe to go see. I want you to see what I got for you. God, in this book here, this this you, let's consider this the wilderness. And in this wilderness is all the promises of God that He promised to ma promise mankind, and it's all up in Him. And so He's asking the the leaders, the preachers, the apostles, the teachers to go ahead and search out the land, search this book. And find out that the promises of God are in there. And we got some of them coming back saying, yeah, it's in him, but God is not doing it now. Yeah, it's in him, but God don't work like that now. Yeah, it's in him, but it died with the apostles. The devil is alive. Then you got some preachers here that say, yeah, it's in here. And we're well able to get it. We're yeah. well able to do it. And this here is the children's bread. This word is for every man to live on and every man to, to, to feed on. And I'm telling you, everything in here, it will prosper if God said in his word, He's able to do it. We believe it. And, they, and our heart toward God is right concerning the word. So he said, grab you some leaders. You go in there and search out the land. And so let's skip all of them, the names of the people that were the leaders to go forth and be the representation of their, their tribe. And then let's get on over here into the 17th verse. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, get ye up this way. Go this way, southward, and, and go up into the mountain. And see the land, what is it? What it is. See what it is. Mm -hmm. And the people that dwell therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. Now watch this here. He, he tell them, observe the land. Just take, take the observation. Now, they heard something, but they, they, they defined it totally different. Moses said, yeah, go in and see everything that's in the land and see the people that's in the land, whether they're few or many. Now, I didn't mean Moses said go in there and get intimidated. He just said go in there and find what's up in there. Whether they be strong, whether they be weak, whether you few or many. Now, everybody in there ain't strong, and everybody in there ain't weak. And everybody in there ain't few, and everybody in there ain't many. He said, I just want you to t take observation, take inventory of what's in there. Mm -hmm. And what and what the land is that, that, that they dwell in, whether it be of good or bad, and what cities they be that they dwell in, whether it be tents or, or, or in strongholds. Mm -hmm. And what the land is, whether it be fat or lean. Uh, how many say, say fat? Fat. Fat. That's what we want. <laughs> we want the fat land. Mm -hmm. Whether there be wood therein or not. And be of good courage. And bring of the fruit of the land. Bring back the evidence. Mm -hmm. Now the time was the time of the, the first ripe grapes. He says time. This is the season. This is when everything that God says should be manifested. This is the best time to go spout the land. Because of everything that God says should be already manifested, should be already to fruition. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zen unto Rehob as men come to Hamath. And they ascended by the south and came up to Hebron where Ahamam and all those names. And we're going to go back over here, move over here um, when they came back. Over here to verse 25. And they returned from searching of the land. Well, oh, I, 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 can't, I, can't, I can't miss verse 23. Yeah. We got to get verse 23. Yeah. And they came unto the brook of Eshcol and cut down from thence a branch. They're going to get some evidence. A branch with one, say, say one. One. One cluster of grapes. And they bury it between two up on a staff. Come on now. <laughs> That's a promise. Mm -hmm. That is the result of the promise of God. God said, the land flow will make it. God said, I put my finger on that. I'm the husband man of that. When I grow grapes, baby, I grow grapes. When I give you a promise, I give you a promise. God don't just give you a little bit of hit and God give you the gusto. So I want you to claim everything. Don't just claim the pain being gone. Claim that thing being eradicated out of your body, mm -hmm. having no existence. The doctors can't find it. They mm -hmm. can't see the symptoms of it. They can't even tell if it ever, ever been there. Every cell mm -hmm. is renewed and regenerated. Yes, it's Lord. as if it was never there. Naaman, Naaman, when he yes. dipped in that river, it said his baby came, his, his skin came back as smooth as a baby's bottom. Mm -hmm. Smooth. 
So we believe God to give you the, the gusto of the promise, everything that says. Yes. So they bear between two upon a staff, and they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. It's brought all the good things back. This is the see this Bible here tells you about all the promises of God. Don't just bring it back, go get it. And the place was called the brook of Eshcol because of the cluster of grapes, which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And the place where they went to cut down was called healing in your body. The place where they went to was called provision. So I'm claiming kind of everything that God says is for you is mm -hmm. what it is. And they returned from searching of the land after 40. It took them 40 days to go and spy that land out. Now you tell me that ain't no good land. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Took them 40 days. And guess what? The grace was so good, they lasted. You know you, the stuff they make these day, all of this pesticide and insecticide on it. Don't last worth nothing. You better hear up and eat it and waste <laughs> your money. But these grapes lasted until they got back. The figs lasted. The pomegranates lasted until they got back to Moses. And they returned searching out the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told them and said, We came into the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. Sure enough. Like the lady said, shine like show enough. Show enough. Show sure enough wrong with milk and honey. Show sure enough got the look at these clusters of grapes. Now, can mm -hmm. you imagine one cluster of grapes that two men had to bear on a staff? I can't even imagine it. <laughs> Nevertheless, look at this. Here comes doubt. Here comes unbelief. Here comes death. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak and Malak, the Malachites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb still the people because he know where they was going with it. It's hold up. Moses didn't tell you to tell all that. He just told you to tell you what was in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they in there. <laughs> He just told you to see if they were walled up or they were living in tents, whether they were strong or whether they was weak, whether they were filled, whether they were men. That's almost like just taking inventory. Didn't make no, the decision of what was going to happen was not mm -hmm. ours to make. He just said, what's up in there? So if you know we had the strong God, they strong, but we still got them. God, they weak. We, you still got them. There be many. And that's what the man of God says. He said, <laughs> God, with you, that it doesn't matter whether there be few or be many. You are able to take them. And so Caleb saw what he said, unbelief was gone, because when you start spewing that unbelief, it's like wildfire and it spreads. Mm -hmm. And so he heard him steal that stuff. He said, hold, hold up. They say, Caleb, steal the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Underline that, we are well able. So Caleb saw where they was going with this, because he saw unbelief trying to get in there. He said, hey, let's go do it now. Let's go and get it over with. Let's take care of it. So when it comes time, when that doctor gives you that evil report, you say, no, you stand right there and say, doctor. I understand you're doing what you're supposed to do. You're, going, you're doing what you're educated to do. But my God, he's able. And I believe God's word. So thank you for the diagnosis. I thank you for going into my body and searching out the land, finding out things that are wrong, sickness and disease. Thank you for finding those things. Now I know what I'm dealing with. Now it's me and God. And God has given me health. God has given me provision. God has given me deliverance. And so therefore, seeing that you have spied out my land from head to toe and you found exactly what's wrong, thank you. But it doesn't matter with God whether it's cancer, AIDS, pancreatic cancer, any type of cancer, any type of disease. It doesn't matter with God. Mm -hmm. Healing belongs to me. And so therefore, there's healing in my body it's just as well as sickness in our. So we're going we're gonna to enter into the rest of healing. And then everything that's not like what I desire is coming out. We're going to go over and we're going to possess it and we're going to take it out the land. Mm -hmm. So that's how you have to look at those things. It said, God, is, your body is, 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 it could be the wilderness. And when the doctors go in and they search out the land and find out the things that's wrong, you go in and say, God, this is what we need to possess. We need to possess this cancer. We need to get it out right now. And I believe mm -hmm. you're able to do it. And if, you, if, if, if your word says that you are my healer, I believe you're well able to do it. So guess what? I'm going to believe what you say. And yes. so it goes on to say, Caleb, steal the people before Moses. 
Caleb didn't even, he spoke, he really spoke out of turn. He wasn't going to wait. Like, Moses, you ain't going to say nothing. Hey, hold up, y'all. Stop that foolishness. <laughs> stop it right now. <laughs> Let's go up and possess this thing at once because he knew his God. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. They saw themselves. See, Caleb saw God. They saw themselves. Mm -hmm. We ain't nothing but a bunch of farmers. We can't do this. And Caleb said, well, we got a big God. See, when you have a big God and you know you have a big God, you can talk a big talk. While everybody's saying, you know, I wouldn't say that if I was you. You know, the devil, he's something else, boy. You make them kind of claim the devil coming. Let him come. God's bigger than the devil. Mm -hmm. Open up your mouth Amen. and open it up wide to folks see your tonsils and tell them what, <laughs> and declare the word of God. Yes, open Lord. up and open wide and declare the word of God and declare his promises and brace yourself if you have to brace yourself, but keep speaking the word. So when the devil comes quickly and immediately in your face, say, you heard what I said. I didn't stutter and say it again. Mm -hmm. Make your hair fringe off his head like your breast smell like you've been eating 40,000 onions and just peel all the skin <laughs> off his face declaring the word of God. <coughs> and the Bible says, when he said that, and they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have gone to search, search it is a land that eateth up with the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. It don't matter with God. And they and there we saw, watch this here. Now they're trying to dictate what God's going to do based upon them in, the image of themselves. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, and which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. So we, uh, so we were in their sight. The Bible said, out of, out of the mouth of Paul, we're, it's unwise to compare ourselves one with another. Mm -hmm. It's unwise. Don't even compare yourself with the giants. Don't even compare yourself with other people. Don't compare, your, compare yourself with the devil. If God is on your side, yes, there is no comparison. Mm -hmm. Who can who can measure the stature of God? I right. can't. Who knows how how tall God is and how wide God is? How deep He is? How wide He is? How powerful He is? So therefore, wait a minute. Don't look at me. <laughs> You're not looking at me to fight this battle. You're looking at God, Jehovah. Mm -hmm. You mess with me, you got to come through him. And I don't think you're big enough or bad enough to do that. Amen. So that's what Caleb yes. thought. They said, God is for yes. us. Amen. And it says in the 14th chapter, And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept, <laughs> wept that night. I bet Caleb said, Look at the power <laughs> of unbelief. <laughs> and all the children of Israel murmured against <laughs> Moses and against Aaron. And the, <laughs> what's so kidding about it? They come out with you report. They didn't get mad at Joshua and Caleb for saying we can go and possess. They got mad at Moses and Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> you brought us in here to die. Uh -huh. And it says, and, and and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or with God, we had died in the wilderness. We ain't coming in here to die in, in, in the midst of the promise. And wherefore hath the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should be prey? Were it, were, were it not better for us to return into Egypt? They done come up with this whole scheme of dying. Just to say, they done, they done already figured out how they was going to die by the sword. They haven't even ran up on one giant yet. One person, and yet they already they mind just going nine to nothing. Just like your mind be going, so what if you go up there, you ain't gonna get healed. You know, you, what if you go to the doctor and it's exactly what he said is, and you gonna the, the, the thing you greatly feared. You your mind going, you you didn't you didn't gave yourself all kinds of cancer, aneurysms, cancer, colon cancer, bladder cancer, off of one pain that you felt in your body. Oh Lord, I I wonder if I got this. I wonder if I got that. Stop wondering. If you need to know, go to the doctor and find out. Then once you find out, then hey, settle that thing with the word of God. Settle that thing with the promise of God and stand mm -hmm. up and don't be moved. Amen. So they done went already went through the sin and already figured out how they was going to die. And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return to Egypt. <laughs> Forget this Moses, man. We're not, man, come on. Y'all can't see the church in this. Yeah. You can't see the church in this here. The pastor started preaching something that you don't believe in. Man, let's, hey, look here, deacon. You know God called you to preach. Come on, Deacon. 
the pastor's stupid now. He's saying some stuff. And, you know, this is God in there. So come on, Deacon. Let's go on and start this church over here. We're going to be the second Baptist church. Now, this is the first. We're going to be the second Baptist church. We're going to be this here. We're going to be, uh, we don't believe nothing. Jesus Christ of Holy Temple Church. We're going to be, we, don't, we can't follow this stuff because we can't believe this. And it goes on to say, Then Moses and Abram fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and, and Caleb, the son of Je, uh, Jef, Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we passed through to search it is an exceeding good land. Listen to me, y'all. The land we looked at, it's an exceeding good land. Mm -hmm. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us a land which flows with milk and honey. Only, only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. We got God on our side. Mm -hmm. The doctor is giving you an evil report. Don't worry about it. God's going to do it. God's going to heal you. If you say he can't, he won't. Mm -hmm. If you believe he won't, he will not. You have to make up your mind. Mm -hmm. I don't care how many people have died of this. I heard a, I heard a pastor say somebody when they give testimony, I've been healed of pancreatic cancer. And the person said, well, you know what? That's good because there ain't too much testimony of people being healed of pancreatic cancer. Well, then you need to say, well, mm -hmm. guess what, Reverend? I am the first one. So it doesn't matter mm -hmm. how many people died of it. You say, I don't care how many people. They, they, they ain't me. Mm -hmm. I believe God. <laughs> well, they kind of believe God too. I don't, how you know they believe God? And they that believe their God shall do exploits in their name. Yes. Did they die? Yeah, they died. As, as, as uh, <laughs> Pastor Gino Gina say, am I right? <laughs> If they died, maybe they really didn't believe. Mm -hmm. The word don't lie. The signs follow them that believe. Well, I ain't seen a manifestation yet. Maybe you hadn't believed yet. I do believe. Well, signs follow them that believe. Uh, as Fred Price would say, evidence. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is your evidence. Mm -hmm. If you continue to believe, Either one or two things is going to happen for your evidence. Yes. Either your lips is going to be saying what God said, or we're going to see the manifestation of it. Now, if we hadn't seen the manifestation of it, all we have to respond to and to lean on is the confidence of your word. Mm -hmm. And if you go around saying, it can't be done, I'm hoping it be done, that ain't faith. Right. That's unbelief. So you, mm -hmm. you don't have anything. So if it hadn't manifested yet, our, our evidence that you have faith is your confession. What are you saying? So you need to make up your mind. I'm going to say what this book say. I'm going to be like Joshua and Caleb. And so God, God looked at that. He, he, uh, he, he looks at the difference between the heart. Um, I wish I could find I wish I had a mark there for I it because it just came to my mind. How God looked at Joshua and Caleb's heart. How it was perfect toward him. He says, look at that. You, did you hear that, Moses? Those ten rascals that came back brought an evil report. They spoke against everything I said. But Joshua and Caleb, they're different. So mm -hmm. here's what I'm going to do. All those ones that say they couldn't do it, they ain't going in. But my servants, Joshua and Caleb, they're going in. Mm -hmm. All those that say God can't do it, listen to me. Don't fool yourself. Don't think God looking at your heart saying, well, you know, they, they mean well. No, that, that meaning well will cause you not to enter in. Mm -hmm. What you need to mean, you need to mean what you say and mean that you believe. And don't be moved by it. Amen. Don't don't yes. don't say anything contrary to what Thank God's word say. Well, Pastor Tim, it's hard to believe that God's able to do that when I've been going through so much battle, so much turmoil, so much hell. That doesn't change what God says. What God's trying to get you to is change your mouth. So if you've been battling the sickness for 10 years, mm -hmm. stop saying, I'm just going through. Because guess <clears throat> what? You're going to be going through another 10 years. What you need to say is, by his stripes, I'm healed. Yes. Say that for 10 years, and I guarantee you, you won't be going through another 10 years. 
where you have made up your mind that I will say nothing but what God says and I'm going to stand on it regardless. Sickness, throwing up, can't get out of bed, I will still declare the word of God that I may declare the works of God. Amen. And don't be moved, don't be moved. And here, listen to me, show forth acts of faith. Declare it. So that way the day is a good day. Mm -hmm. Pain doesn't dictate whether I have a good day or not. What, is, what, what declares I have a good day or not is what I declare. Mm -hmm. My words say I'm going to have a good day. Yes. My words say I'm mm -hmm. going to have a blessed day. So whatever mm -hmm. my words say, then I line myself up to walk therein. Yes, Lord. Legs might be shaking and trembling, but legs, I have already declared a good day. Okay. Line up. Let's go. Come on. You're slowing. Mm -hmm. You're getting behind. Speed it up, Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. <laughs> and so you walk in and and mm -hmm. as you go, you're going to yes. see that that body Amen. start lining up with mm -hmm. that word. So you might as well stop fussing and complaining and belly aching and pain, being in pain because you're going to line up with the word of God. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to move. I'm not going to relent. And when your body starts seeing that you're crazy enough to keep believing what this word say do and making it do what it's supposed to do, it's mm -hmm. going to line up. Mm -hmm. It's going to line up. That stuff has to go. If you waver, come on now. Well, why am I keep why am I keep going through this? Or you keep wavering? The book the book is true, and you, please don't think this this like so. Well, God loved me. He's just going to do it. God loved you. He already did it. He did it two thousand years ago. But you have to receive it. And how you receive it is, you can't waver. You can't doubt. He said, "Let not that man James it, James them they, those apostles. You would have you would have." You think we're throwing it on you. Those guys would have threw it on you. You would have walked in there talking about, it's pain. I've been going through this here for 14 years. Why you been going through it for 14 years? All you got to do is believe. You think we're throwing something on you. They would have cut you to the core. Jay would say, well, I tell you what, you must be full of doubt and unbelief. Wait a minute. Hold up, brother. What do you mean? <laughs> I told you, if you waver, you ain't going to get nothing from God. He said, don't think that any man that waver is going to get anything from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, that's how he told We sitting here petting you well, sister. Just keep on holding on. No, sister, stand on the word and don't be moved. Mm -hmm. Or you're going to continue to want. Or you're going to continue to be in sickness. Mm -hmm. You can't be wrestling. Come on, some of you know you're doubting in your mind. You, 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 you. Right now, you shouting yes and amen. And boy, you get in that bed, the devil says, it, now it's just me and you, baby. It's me and you. Yeah, I, I saw you not shouting while that preacher was preaching. You believe all that? Uh-huh. And hit you in your stomach, hit you in your legs, hit you in your back, hit you in your head, and say, now what you going to do? You better stand up and preach the word, say exactly what you heard tonight, and say, I, I will not move, I will not relent, I will not provoke God, because what that preacher was saying was the promises of God, and that's what God says, that's what God's word says, and so I believe the report of the Lord. Amen. Concerning me, if healing, if God say healing belongs to me, healing belongs to me. Oh, you ought to go through that Bible and show the devil just what you meant. Everywhere there was a promise of God, put your name on it. Put your name on it. Well, that's desecrating the Bible. Listen here. This Bible ain't nothing but paper and ink. This is, not, this is not sacred. What's sacred is what's in it, what it proclaims. That's what's sacred. Go through that and mark it up right up. I, was, I had a guy, one of my coworkers, <laughs> pick me up for work one day, and I was so in, in, into the Word of God, I was studying reading it, and I was just marking and reading. He said, You writing your Bible? I said, yeah. <laughs> this is not an idol. This is just, this is just oh, paper Lord. and ink. And he looked at me like I had desecrated something most valuable. Oh, I would never write in my Bible. Mine, I devour mine. I, I go through here and I write it up, mark it up, put my name on things and write on little notes on the side because this is what not this this paper and ink is not what is not what is what's not sacred. What's sacred is the promise that it proclaims. And to eat it, I just get all in it and I find the scripture and I read it and I underline it. And when I do that, I find out it goes in me a little deeper and I'm able to consume it. And I'm telling you, when I need to find something, I can easily flip to it because what I've devoured it. I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've just I've possessed it. Mm -hmm. I, this is the land of that's flowing with milk and honey. Everything I need, every promise I need, I go in here and I devour it, and then I meditate on, I eat on it. Oh, baby, it ain't nothing but grapes up in here. And I'm telling you, when I grab something, it's just like grapes in me. I just bite it and just just chew on it. Juice be flying all out on the side of my mouth, <laughs> squirting in my eye. That's, that's that's how you have to see the word. 
that that, that mm. it, it's it's more than your necessary food and it tastes mm-hmm. sweet till you it's like honey. Yeah. And you get into it and you don't move and then you keep the more you read it, the more it convinces your heart that it's real. You got a lot of people that want to be philosophical. You can teach it. <laughs> what good is a theologian teaching this word if you hadn't lived it or you hadn't received it? You're a hypocrite. You know? mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, there are some students that will put you to the chase and, uh, and cut you up and, 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 and with just a few scriptures and you can't, you can't explain it. You just got to know it. You just got to know it. There's some things in this Bible that are really, truly hard to believe. Even Peter said Paul taught some things that, that a lot of people wrestled to their destruction because Paul taught some things that was kind of hard to receive. Because it, it had to bypass your intellect and get into your heart. Mm-hmm. Then when it gets in your heart, the Holy Ghost will bring the revelation of it. And you say, ah, I see it. It's so plain. Mm-hmm. So now we want to make sure that God is able and that we agree with what yes. God is able to do. Thank you, Jesus. He is able. And if we say anything contrary to what God says, it's an evil report. Mm-hmm. So God said the land flow. Now you think about it. God made a promise say the land flow is making honey. Mm-hmm. It's for you. But he says another scripture, he says, if you say in your heart, you can't dispossess this land, he says, I can't dispossess it for you. Mm-hmm. When God is looking for someone whose heart is perfect toward him, that says, wait a minute, my God got this. You don't have to ever fret or be fearful about anything concerning you, concerning your life, whole, I mean your, your your household or your life. If God be for, let me go back and read what this man said. This is what Joshua said. I want you to get this ring here. He says, "If the Lord delight in us, mm-hmm. then He will bring us into His land. If the Lord delight in you, He will heal you of that sickness. Mm-hmm. If the Lord delights in you." He will pay that bill. If the Lord delights in you, he will save that child. So you need, what you need to say, the Lord delights in me. Mm-hmm. Now, if you've been acting crazy, you're walking in sin, and you know you fall away from God, then that might be a, that may be a reason for you to doubt. Because, you know, the devil will bring it up in a minute. You know you ain't walking with God. You know you just as full of sin as you as I'm looking at you. And mm-hmm. so he'll bring that condemnation on you. And it's going to be hard for you to believe that God delights in you. But repent. Mm-hmm. Just repent. Just say, Lord, I know my knucklehead. Please forgive me. And He's faithful just to forgive you, please, from all unrighteousness. Yes. And get yourself back in right standing with God. Say, Now, devil, <laughs> He delights in me. Yes. He's yeah. worth. So, so only rebel not against the Lord. Neither fear ye the people. Don't fear what the doctors say. Don't fear the report. Don't fear the sickness. Just believe God. Just believe Him. And he's well able to do what you believe him to do. And you're well able to receive it. You are well able to receive every promise of God. You are well able to receive it. Why? Because God delights in you. Only rebel not and have an evil heart. So he said they brought an evil report on the land. Don't bring an evil heart, an evil report upon your your healing. Mm -hmm. Don't bring an evil report upon your provision. Don't speak against what God says he's done for you. Now he's able to do exceedingly abundant above all that you're able to ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. Don't reject that. Don't speak, don't speak against that. Well, how he's going to do it? Mm-hmm. Don't do that. Just yes. say, I believe I receive. Yes. Be it unto me according to your word, Lord. Mm-hmm. Let's pray. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, yes. all of those that have Thank heard this Lord. word, Lord, that they are well able. Well able to receive healing, well able to see provision, because Lord, you delight in them, you delight in us. And if you delight in us, oh God, you will bring us into everything that you said concerning your word of your promise. And we receive it in Jesus' name. You showed us that you loved us so much that you sent your only son to die for us, your only begotten son. And Lord, if you've given your son to die for us, surely through his living, through his resurrected power, God, through his name, you're able to give us all things, God. You're able to make all grace abound toward us that we may have all sufficiency, lacking and wanting nothing, God. And so, Lord, we thank you for your promises, for they are yea and amen. And we lay hold to them. And we don't provoke you this day, O God, by speaking evil against them. We receive every promise that you have declared in your word, and we receive them in the name of Jesus. Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll see you next Sunday.